Hi, my name is Travis. I work as an emergency management GIS analyst. I'm responsible for coordinating and managing all GIS support functions necessary to mitigate against, prepare for, respond to, and recover from emergencies or disasters. Some of the duties of an emergency management position uh, are basically, I, I break it out from day-to-day -day duties to disaster duties. Disaster duties include uh, mapping for situational awareness, uh, data gathering, uh, data analysis regarding emergency or potential disaster situations. Uh, our region, for example, uh, is prone to hurricanes, flooding, dangerous storms. Uh, as an emergency management GIS analyst, I have to work with state and federal agencies to gather and disseminate that data. Uh, examples uh, are evacuation zone areas, uh, evacuation routes, storm surge zones, uh, and in coordinating damage assessment, data gathering, uh, and other uh, disaster mapping for after the storm has rolled out. Uh, there's a lot of recovery efforts that, that go into play after that, and so that's, that's uh, mapping out uh, areas that were maybe destroyed or are areas that uh, maybe some people need uh, uh, need like emergency shelter, uh, so we, we map all that information out. Uh, for a day-to-day -day operations, uh, that includes uh, our web-based management of our web-based information management system. Uh, this system provides a single access point uh, for collecting and disseminating all of our emergency event-related data. That includes uh, road closure data, so if a road closes, we, we map that out and let the public know. Uh, uh, shelter management, if we have shelters open, we show how many people maybe are in a shelter or what kind of shelter that is. Uh, another responsibility is keeping up with our 911 mapping system. That information has to be uh, updated on a regular basis so that we could keep up with where ambulance and fire are supposed to be dispatched to. Stress level for this job, day-to-day -day activities are, are not very stressful. But during an activation, your stress level can be quite high. Uh, you're providing data to a multitude of people that are making critical decisions with the data that you provide. And if you provide inaccurate uh, or wrong data, it can have very negative consequences. Uh, work hours, it's a 40-hour standard work week most of the time. Um, I would say during an activation, though, it's... You're, you're here at the Emergency Operations Center 24-7, and uh, typically you're working a 12-hour shift, but I guarantee you'll end up working quite a few more hours than that. Education-wise, I would recommend uh, going and, and, and if, you're gonna, if you're really interested in GIS, getting a computer science degree uh, with an emphasis on your electives being uh, anything GIS related, except any ESRI courses. ESRI is the one of the main uh, software vendors for GIS. Uh, that that would be that would be very helpful. Also, uh, making sure that you take some courses in programming. Uh, Python, especially, is is one of the one of the main program languages that's used within GIS programming. Those things are not necessarily necessary, but but to get your foot in the door somewhere. Uh, those are two things that you that you really want to. That it, it's it's much more uh, information technology related, I think, than a lot of people realize. There are a lot of universities that offer a a GIS certif certification or GIS certified professional uh, license. Th those are that's definitely recommended. Those courses are usually about a year long, and uh, they could definitely help you get your foot in the door, especially if you don't have any experience in the field. This type of job, it's, it's very analytical. Uh, you need to be organized. Uh, there's a, every day there's, there's some kind of problem that you have to solve uh, using your analysis type skills. And so that's, I definitely stress that uh, it's, it's very important. I'd say the best part of the job uh, is definitely that you, you know, you realize and know that you are having a major impact on people's lives during a disaster. Uh, being able to, to notify people uh, that of an impending storm or that they need to evacuate and especially helping people after a storm. I mean, it, you're, you're helping people and that's, that's a, to me, that's very rewarding. In my career in the past, I've, 
uh, worked for, for many private organizations and it and it, you just don't feel that kind of connection that you're really making that big a difference uh, with this type of position you know that you are impacting people's lives and you're making a difference the worst part of the job uh, I'm going to say this in the stance of GIS and emergency management is that uh, we live here in Florida and so we have to deal with hurricanes and hurricane season during hurricane season you're basically on call 24 7 you're you're uh, you're you're not taking vac long vacations uh, if there's a storm that's brewing in the Gulf then you're you're going to be around to make sure that you're available to respond to those kinds of disasters uh, at this point in time right now in California they've got wildfires going on uh, that are affecting a lar large portion of the state uh, the GIS uh, professionals that are in emergency management over there they are they're definitely going through that right now they're they're in the in the emergency operations center 24 7 right now and so uh, that's just depending on the type where you live in the country you just have to be aware that you will be responding to emergencies and that and uh, and it's it's going to take a lot of your time and, and time that away from your family as well. The advice that I would give if, if for anybody that's starting off in GIS and it's anybody that's even taken GIS courses that's wanting to get in the field. One of the main things that you need to know how to do is make a map. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many people that I've run into that maybe even have a master's degree in GIS, but they're just their cartography skills are, are just not just not there. If you if you want to get a, a position in GIS, you can you can simply go out to to uh, you can go out download some software. Uh, Esri, uh, is, like I mentioned before, is the is the main provider of GIS software. You can download a trial version. You can go to YouTube and and type in how to make a map using ArcGIS and it will show you how to pull data for free from all kinds of different sources to build your own map to work on your cartography skills. Uh, that's, that's extremely important. The other uh, that, that's, will, that'll really help you get your foot in the door is if you know a programming language. I can't stress that enough. I mentioned that before. Uh, there's so much of GIS that's turning into, or so many employers that are looking now for, for people that can code uh, and uh, in GIS and that's and it's it's not something that's outside of the realm of GIS It's just coding. I mean if you if you can code one language then you can learn another language fairly easily and so that's uh, those are two things those are two very important things uh, that I think will it'll help you get a position in GIS